Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Today we're covering the loud. I want to shout out Wolf540 who requested the loud. We are getting to the end of the vanilla classes, so if there's a class you want to see, let me know and I will add it to the list. Alright, so the Loud, I think, is one of the most fun and also most powerful characters in the game. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it has uh, mostly downsides, but it has access to my very favorite stat in the game, plus enemy percentages. The more enemies that spawn, the more money you get. And generally speaking, you would rather have way more money and more to fight than have fewer enemies, so this is an enormous bonus. Plus 30% damage is a nice little boost, and the only real downside is minus 3 harvesting at the end of a wave. What this means in practice is that you're going to lose a certain amount of money over the course of the game, but of course you are getting 50% more money, so you will still end up quite economically positive at the end of the game with the loud, um, and you can't use harvesting at all, pretty much. We're never going to buy harvesting on this character because we, we can't overcome the downside. It's important to know that this that negative harvesting reduces your income from that wave at the end of the wave, so it's not going to take away materials, um, or it, it will take away materials that you have, but it, it's not going to take away XP or anything like that, so it's only negative materials. So overall, it's less bad to have negative harvesting than it is good to have positive harvesting. What weapon we choose on the loud? I think there's honestly a lot of directions you can go, and this character is so powerful that pretty much any of them, I think, can work. One way you can go is trying to farm insane stats by picking one of the ghost weapons or thief dagger and just trying to get really greedy, get your stats ludicrously high. Another way is with good AoE clearing weapons like spear or lightning shiv. Slingshot, of course, is always good at crowds. The explosive weapons like plank or shredder have some synergy with the, the groups of enemies. But the, the build that I think is going to both be the most fun just because it's my favorite weapon and also yield probably the easiest way to win is the submachine gun. So we're going to grab submachine gun and go for the loud. The reason I like this weapon is just that it attacks really fast, so it's not going to have a problem clearing cla clearing crowds. Um, that one's hard to say, five times fast without being demonetized. <laughs> and it also just ends up doing really high damage to elites, which are something that this character can struggle with later on. Often here I would roll looking for harvesting, but of course this character doesn't want to buy harvesting. We do want flat ranged damage though, that's the most important stat for us because we have percent damage, so increasing our flat range damage it will be multiplied by that percent damage. We are definitely grabbing this SMG and I will roll looking for more of them. Keep on rolling. I will lock the coupon. You are tagged with, on, on the loud, you're tagged with items that have the pickup tag because there's lots of enemies. So things like alien tongue will show up, but for some reason coupon is also tagged with pickup, I think. So it's, it's you're more likely to see pickup show up in the, or coupon show up in the shop, which is a, a small advantage to this character as well. And all the things that care about consumables and so on, like bags and consumable healing. So that's another, shop advantage you get. You also get a really fun little thing which uh, is unique to this character that, or some very lucky builds on other characters, that adds a little extra dimension to one of my favorite items in the game, which I'll talk about if we happen to see it. And if not, then you'll just ha have to remind me in the comments. All right, I'm gonna take uh, percent damage over the crit chance. We still want percent damage, um, even though we have some already, 30% is not so much that we're never going to buy that. And here, although I would like flat range damage or attack speed, both are very good, I'm going to take the speed just because it's a level 2 upgrade. Definitely buy the SMG and lock the coffee and roll and roll, roll, still looking for SMGs, great. 4 with a 5th locked, you would... I think you can usually get 5 with a 6th locked on a medium price weapon like SMG, but it's not that unusual that we didn't, so I'm definitely not too worried about this. Of course, on any SMG build, the floater enemies that shoot projectiles when you hit them with ranged attacks are some of the more dangerous enemies because you hit them with a ton of attacks and 
fill the world with projectiles. See, so here's a bag. That's great to find. And here I am going to just take percentage damage. We also, of course, want to build some lifesteal, but I, I really want to make sure our damage is keeping up with the wave, so we will take percentage damage first. Buy the coupon first, and then we're going to buy out this whole shop. Then we get a free reroll, which is always nice. Butterfly is excellent, because that gives us lifesteal, and I will buy the hedgehog as well. Range damage is just so good for this character that I think it's worth uh, locking the hedgehog, and I'm just going to save 23 here. We could also have not locked the hedgehog, maybe re-rolled, looked for another weapon or something, but I think it's totally fine to just take the ranged damage boost when it shows up. Since ranged damage is so powerful on this character, I think it, it's worth locking items that you might not lock otherwise on other characters. Luck, obviously, is going to be very good for us as well. Really nice that we got that bag and then immediately found a crate. Metal plate is an excellent find. More armor is always good. And here I am going to take the 10 luck because getting that going is one of the ways that we can build some economy. I could take the 8 harvesting. This would be 8 materials per wave for the rest of the game, effectively. But I think we're better off rolling for something a little better here. And yeah, I guess I'll take 9% speed. At this point, we can stop buying speed pretty much, but 14% uh, speed is a nice boost, and that lets us buy speed negative items with more or less impunity. Definitely buy the butterfly and the ranged damage that we locked. Here, I will buy crit chance. Really would like to find another submachine gun, though, so I'm going to throw in one reroll here. We're guaranteed to see a weapon because it's still Shopwave 4, so it's not unlikely for us to find that. Peaceful B is much worse on this character for a couple reasons, so we're not going to buy it. One, we can't use the harvesting at all. Two, dodge is going to be a very late game purchase for this character if we do end up buying it at all. Um, and three, we're a ranged damage build, and the, the penalty on Peaceful B is twice as bad for ranged damage builds as it is for melee damage builds because ranged damage is twice as valuable. On the other hand, I'll lock both of these starting to get a little bit concerned that we haven't seen a sixth weapon yet, but we can always go a non-SMG ranged weapon. A Ghost Scepter would be a nice one to add in, so maybe I should have taken the one that we saw. Um, or anything. Any decent weapon, like a laser gun or a shotgun, would be totally fine. It is most fun, I think, with six SMGs, so I'm hoping to see another one. As you can see, we're starting to generate way more money than most characters would for this wave, so even with our minus 15, we still have 210. Here, I'm definitely taking max HP. We need that a lot. And because it's level 3, and only because it's level 3 compared to everything else, I will take the 10 harvesting here. This is going to be, um, what's that, 140 materials, basically. So, we can take that and, and stem the bleeding just a little bit. I don't recommend taking harvesting usually, but if you happen to see a level 3 harvesting upgrade over all the others, it can sometimes be worth taking. Let me grab the broken mouth and the tree, and we'll keep rolling. Um, Pocket Factory is kind of fun for this character as well, because we just got a tree, but I think I'm going to roll past it. I'll take the injection. Uh, the reason I'm rolling past it is just that I really want to find more weapons. All right, here we go. We finally found weapon upgrades, and I'm going to take the Lost Duck and the level 1 SMG, lock the level 2 SMG, because that lets us get our luck going sooner. I could actually have re-rolled there to see if we could pick up another level 1 SMG, but I think the chances of that are not super high. So I, I don't know that that's worth it. Obviously, the best thing that we could find at this point would be any kind of piercing because piercing is is really good for clearing lots of enemies. One thing that's definitely going to happen this game is that 
the game sounds are going to turn off because once you start attacking really frequently and enemies start dying really frequently, the game just sort of turns off a lot of the game sounds. Small magazine is basically the best item we could possibly find on pretty much any ranged build, but especially when we have some bonus percent damage already. And here, because it's level 2, I'll take some lifesteal. Um, fertilizer... Is the fertilizer worth buying for 28? I think it honestly is, uh, at, at this point in the game, worth buying for 28. It's, again, just because it's such a good item. Earlier or later, I probably wouldn't buy it, because earlier we need to get our guns online, and later, obviously, it's going to have less impact. But we're, we've hit sort of the sweet spot where it's only going to take four waves to pay for itself. Um, so I think it, it's, it's worth picking up here. We'll lock this and... Grab the second SMG, and then I am going to buy Weird Ghost here. We have 4% lifesteal as well as some consumable heal and some luck, so we should be able to repair that pretty quickly. And then here I am going to buy the mouse. Mouse is, of course, excellent for this character because this will give us even more enemies. It's less efficient in terms of the total number of enemies that it... Or it's going to spawn the same total number of enemies, but as a percentage change, it's less efficient. But, of course... Um, Five life steal is really nice, and more enemies is always good. And then I will take the tentacle as well. That gives us an additional way to heal, as well as some crit chance to multiply our already high damage. I need to just not take a dumb hit early in this wave and die instantly, because I have the weird ghost. Definitely letting these guys hatch, because we have plenty of damage to clear them quickly. Notice how quickly I'm healing just because we have we're a lifesteal build with uh, submachine guns. Even with only what nine percent lifesteal we have right now, we heal back to full very rapidly. With luck and trees, we get quite a lot of value out of this bag. We're going to end up with a decent number of crates over the course of most waves. Trying to kill the, these guys before the end of the wave. And a second bag, definitely worth taking. And a gentle alien, of course, excellent for us as well. And here I am going to just take three more flat ranged damage. I wouldn't mind the attack speed as well, but attack speed is less efficient for SMGs than it is for other um, ranged weapons because they already attack so fast. Let me grab another gentle alien and a butterfly and roll, and here I will take the metal plate. I'm not going to take the tardigrade. We have plenty of healing, and I just need more max HP rather than something like a, a tardigrade. And then we are going to grab lemonade and tree, and I will throw in one more reroll here. While we keep getting items that tempt me to buy harvesting, I mean, it, it gets decreased, but... A tractor is going to still be worth a decent amount. All right, this is a very weird circumstance, but I think I am going to still just buy the tractor. It's such a good item to find on wave eight, even for this character. With that extra three flat range damage, we just clear all these enemies so quickly. I did tank a hit there. Some more leveled up submachine guns would be high on my list of things to find, and of course any any form of piercing is the best thing that we could find. Um, other than that, we really just need some max HP. We've actually got pretty good armor already, so I'm not hugely worried about our defensive stats, other than maximum HP. But as you can see, our, our clear speeds would be much, much faster with any form of piercing. I actually had to let that tree die there. I'll take some more range damage, sure, and I will just buy a little more lifesteal here. Even though we're buying more harvesting, I think it's still not worth, uh, not worth taking the 10 harvesting there. But I will take the tractor here. Let me roll, and I'm not going to take bowler hat. I keep rolling. 5% damage for sure. Roll some more. And I will take the snail as well. I like the 
SMG build, even if you don't find piercing or bouncing, although of course it's better if you do, because it's just so satisfying watching the groups of enemies just slowly get worn away. Feels very tower defensey. And also it, it makes this character provide some challenge because you do have to deal with the hordes individually, whereas if we had spears or something, we would just be clearing all these guys out at once. Wouldn't really have to care about my movement as much. I did dive into the middle of that group to make sure I killed the tree there. I really want to kill this tree as well, so we'll try to work our way around through the horde. Since I have mouse and several gentle aliens, we definitely have a lot of enemies. I think that that middle tree we're not going to get here. But we did make 730 plus 155 on the ground, so could be worse. I'll still take the plus speed, even though our speed is quite high already. And yeah, I'll take 9% crit chance. That's going to increase my damage by a lot. We'll take plus 3 range damage as well. At this point now, uh, we actually want attack speed more than um, range damage, and even percent damage probably more than range damage, so that's nice. Uh, this is a good find here. Obliterator obviously will pierce through all the enemies, and given that we haven't found leveled up submachine guns, this is going to be a really good way to help give us some wave clear, as well as being good against bosses. So I'm going to buy out this whole shop. And then just take more armor, roll again. Rip and tear is kind of fun for this character as well as a, as a possibility. It gives us... Um, gives us the explosions. We have only one melee damage. I think I'm going to pass on it, but that is kind of a fun item for this character, so it's worth thinking about. I'll still take the missile and I'll lock the bat here. 15% lifesteal is kind of where I, I want to end up at the end of the game, so getting to that point means we can more or less stop prioritizing it. The obliterator is just like not shooting because <laughs> the submachine guns are clearing everything ahead of time, but it will be very helpful when we get to our elite waves later on. While we're clearing this wave, I do want to take this chance to say thank you to everyone who has been leaving comments, liking the videos. It really helps a ton with the algorithm, so if you take a second while you're watching the video to do that, I really do appreciate it. Sorry to harass you guys with that all the time, but it, it really makes a huge difference. Let me know... Um, I don't know. What is the, the national dish where you're from? I guess here it would be poutine, because I'm in Canada. Um, I'm going to buy some armor here and some ranged damage. All right, let me grab some lifesteal. I could buy more lifesteal here. I think I'm going to pass on that. I will start building my dodge up though with this gambling token. Right now I just need better submachine guns and a little more defensive stats, so I'll buy this. 15% lifesteal is fine, so I'm not going to spend on the blood leech. I will spend on the terrified onion. A little more speed is good, and if we find a power generator or something, we'll be very happy to have that. Um, alien eyes, we don't have a ton of max HP, and our percent damage actually is not as high as I'd like, but I think it's still good to buy, especially because we will be looking for piercing and bouncing shots later on. This level 2 SMG is kind of the best thing that we could have found here. I'm going to pass on the medical turret because we and the blood leech. We have plenty of healing from our other stuff already. On the other hand, whetstone is such an efficient purchase that I'll grab it anyways. And helmet. Pickup range is also quite good for this character. Um, so it's, it's often worth considering the alien tongue just because there will be so many consumables and things on the ground. I'm not going to lock it, but I will lock the fairy. This will give me uh, some, somewhere around 10 HP regeneration, which is quite a lot already. Another really fun item to find would be obviously any of the other high tier weapons. Nuclear launcher in, in particular is really hilarious on this character because there's so many enemies.
We have yet to find the item that I was talking about in the intro, which is Lure. So Lure is really cool with this character because normally it spawns two loot aliens, but this character has plus 50% enemy spawns. So when you buy Lure, it spawns three loot aliens, increasing the value of that item enormously. Um, the way that the rounding works, that only works if you have 50% or more alien spawn. So it's usually pretty unlikely to get it on another character, but really, really good on this character. Minus attack speed, four, plus two range damage. I don't even know if this is worth it at this point. I think I'll take it just in case we get good attack speed later on, but it's very possible that you don't want to take the scope there. I will take uh, that, and then I'll take 12% dodge here again. Now our dodge is actually quite good by the fairy and we're going into an elite wave otherwise i would buy this weird ghost because our, our healing is really good but given that we're going to fight an elite i don't want to risk just taking one hit and dying immediately and uh pass on all this stuff wheat gives us harvesting which we don't really care about although our harvesting is now actually um out i think it's it's almost outpacing the amount that it's decreasing. So we've actually ended up with positive harvesting somehow in this build, but I'm going to buy it just for the two range damage. It's an inefficient way to buy two range damage, but still worth grabbing, I think. Mutation and missile, yes. And then keep rolling, roll again. And yeah, we'll take Finn, Gentle Alien and Shady Potion, all very good. Here we go fight this. Elite, get close enough that the Obliterator targets it. Uh, I can manually target it with the Obliterator as well, so I'm going to just keep doing that. There we go. And we were able to take it out super fast thanks to our very high damage and the Obliterator. When you have Obliterator, it's definitely worth manually targeting sometimes because you don't want it firing off into the middle of nowhere, wasting a ton of its piercing shots like it just did there. You saw it sort of skate off down where if I had shot it into a crowd it could uh, could have killed more stuff. It's really funny that I've somehow ended up in a harvesting build on the loud. Not a usual not the usual case for this web uh, for this character. I feel like my last couple guides, we've gotten slightly weird builds, like my doctor guide as well. 20 melee damage doesn't do anything, although if I had taken the rip and tear, I might consider it. So I'm just going to recycle the mammoth. That's a little sad that we didn't get anything we wanted there. And here, I think I actually want 6 max HP over 3 armor. Um, our max HP is kind of our, our most important defensive stat at this point. Let's grab all this stuff and roll. Definitely upgrade my submachine guns. I am going to pass on the butterfly at 22% lifesteal. We don't need to buy any more lifesteal as well. We have our regeneration and everything. Recycling machine, of course, is great. And metal detector is great. XP gain is actually worth mentioning on this character. So you're going to end up with more XP than almost any other character in the game because you have plus 50% enemies. And the, the loss of harvesting doesn't reduce your... Uh, your XP. So plus XP gain items are really valuable for you. In fact, I think at this point it's maybe still not too late. I'm going to pass on it, but I, I would have to do quite a bit more math uh, to decide whether that was actually correct or not. I'm gonna roll again and we'll take the tree and uh, I'll take alien tongue just because we have the, the money for it and pickup range is nice to have on this character. As you've seen, we've ended up leaving a lot of money on the ground, and that's even just with the SMG build. That's significantly worse, more of a factor for this character if you're going with slingshots or something like that, or shredders, where you'll end up killing enemies across the map and not being able to pick up their materials. A little bit of piercing would really go a long way towards, towards clearing these guys out faster. Obviously the obliterator is doing some stuff for us, but the fact that we haven't found any kind of piercing shots is unusual, though certainly not crippling to our build. Trying to direct my obliterator to fire into the big crowd of enemies here. Trying to time my manual shots for when the obliterator is about to fire by, by clicking that. Um, 
that's not a skill that you really get used to in this game, though, so it's something I'm, I'm trying to do, but not always successful at. All right, yeah, I'll keep taking range damage here, and great, we finally got some attack speed. That will help a ton. All right, here's our lure. So for some reason, the tooltip doesn't show three additional aliens, but I'm pretty sure it will spawn three. We are going to have to count this. Um, but help, help me keep track, see if we got three loot aliens. And then I'm not going to buy the scope here. I will keep upgrading my SMGs and the hedgehog as well. Mouse, again, really good, as well as Cyclops Worm, both excellent items to find. And we can go to wave 14. I guess I, I did buy the, the loot, the lure on an elite wave, but hopefully we can kill the elite quickly enough that it won't cause us a problem. This would be a lot harder without the obliterator, I have to say. You know, I'm gonna back off and wait for the obliterator to clear a small gap in the horde. There we go. All right, I hope everyone is having fun trying to count loot aliens during this. There's one up there I saw during all this chaos. I am not having fun because there's so many uh, little spawn guys. Definitely wave 14, which is one of the hardest waves in general. Here's another loot alien. Let's see if we can get him. Come on, come on. Die already. Got him. Alright, we ended up with a lot of crates, so I think we probably did spawn three loot aliens, or maybe even four during that wave. Um, so, pretty sure I didn't lie to you about that one. Anyways, let's take the rip and tear here. I think that's just going to be really fun. I will take the pickup range, I'll take medical turret, and I'll take the wheat, I'll take the cake. Take the extra stomach, yeah. So I could have recycled all that for about 500 because we have the recycling machine, but these are all great items, I think. Spicy sauce will actually explode for pretty good damage, and we do need more max HP. Lens, and here, uh, yeah, I'll just take four armor. I think four armor is going to work out pretty well for us here. We'll definitely take percent damage and flat damage and keep rolling. Sad Tomato would increase my HP regeneration. I don't think we really need that. Although, obviously, starting at 50% HP is not going to be a big deal for us. I think the thing we need more than anything else, really, is just max HP dodge and damage. I will take Finn still, though. Um, do I want the Whetstone, even? 30% lifesteal? I think I'm going to pass on Whetstone, actually. I'll just take the Defective Steroids as, as a max HP boost. Roll past all this, buy the lemonade, buy the missile. We can afford to take minus two lifesteal here, so I'll, I'll just buy 10% attack speed. It's a really bad way to buy 10% attack speed, but um, attack speed is, is really a low stat for us right now, so we need to boost it. Gentle alien again. How many of these have we found? We've got two mice and four aliens, I think. Where is it? No, six aliens. All right. So our enemies is up to 100%. So if we find a lure, we'll actually spawn four loot aliens. Let me grab this attack speed and HP. I'm going to lock the fin anyways, because I do love to go fast. So we should be seeing twice as many enemies as a normal character would at this point. That does make it pretty important to clear out the, the spawns because the number of projectiles that can be on the map because of them are, as you saw in wave 14, can be really, really difficult. Getting hit by a million projectiles in a row is kind of the way that we could still lose this run. Although, to be honest, I think at this point we are not in a ton of danger of losing the run. The rip and tear also does help kind of replace some replace the pierce that we are missing. It doesn't do a perfect job of it cuz it's based on our melee damage, but it's still quite good. Let's see how much uh, how many materials we're getting this wave. Um, I'm just going to recycle this. We don't need 2% life steal. And here I will take two range damage, I think. We really ended up just getting flat damage, 
which normally is the the hardest stat to find on um, range damage characters, but it has worked out this way for this build. Let me grab the SMG and the propeller hat. Roll again. Poisonous tonic is exactly what we need here. Attack speed and crit chance will help so much with our damage output. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep buying all this stuff. And yeah, I'm going to keep buying rip and tears, I think. They only explode for 30, but it's it's really uh, helping clear through these waves quickly. And then I'll, I'll take the luck, but still lock the max HP. I guess because we have two rip and tears now, I could actually start prioritizing buying a little bit of melee damage. Loving how fast we're moving. This is why I think this is just one of the most fun characters, and also a really fun way to build this character. Just kind of hosing everything down in a stream of SMG shots. If we had a little more attack speed too, it would get really ridiculous. And there is still time. The amount of flat damage we have is, is nonsense. Like, the 77 damage crits from individual SMG shots is ridiculous, honestly. Um, 4 range damage or 7% crit chance, I think. With 30... 6%, I'm just going to take the flat damage. Um, I'll re-roll this. I think we can do better. We definitely did better. I'll take uh, 12 max HP. Now with 120 max HP, I think we're, we're in great shape in terms of all our defensive stats. Sure, I'll keep buying more enemies. And enemy speed is one of the ways we could definitely still lose this one, so definitely avoiding that. Blindfold is great. Dodge is our our best stat to increase if we want to increase our defensive capabilities. And then we finally got our pierce. That's really good. Do I want two obliterators or one level four obliterator? I think I'd rather have two level three obliterators. And then we'll just keep some SMGs here. And then, all right, I will upgrade this SMG. Although I will do that later. Vigilante ring, we'll buy it wave 17. So, it will only trigger twice, so it's only 6% damage, so I'm not going to lock it, but I, I will lock the, the Cyclops Worm. <laughs> well, there goes that elite. We've got the, the fastest elite kill in the west out here. I keep seeing on, on YouTube ads for a bunch of westerns. It's sort of weird that the western has come back. I guess something had to take the throne from superhero movies eventually. I don't know if it'll be that, but we'll see. All right, we are up to 900 materials. So Diploma, we obviously don't use the engineering at all, and the XP gain at this point is not terribly valuable, so I'm just gonna recycle it. Um, landmines, no good. Gentle Alien, yes please. Are we at cap for those yet? We're one away from capping our Gentle Aliens. That's really fun. Let me grab this and we'll combine this to a level four. Grab this. Oh, I should have checked actually the, the damage. So our submachine guns are out damaging the obliterators, but that's okay. The obliterator is mostly there for one-shotting um, uh, elites and bosses. I'm going to take the plus explosion damage because we have the rip and tears and the explosion size as well. Here I will grab just some more consumable healing because why not? We've actually, we're going to end up with only just barely negative harvesting at the end of the game. That's, that's really funny. And then I will take this leather vest, take the SMG, 
take the crit chance. I could actually take Triangle of Power because we're we really aren't taking many hits, but I'm not gonna lock it. Explosion damage and explosion size alongside two rip and tears giving us a 40% explosion chance actually means that that's doing a, a pretty reasonable amount of damage. And because we have decent percentage damage and some explosion damage, it actually hits for, for a fair bit. I should check the damage on those uh, after this wave. So I've taken one hit so far, which I dodged, so the Triangle of Power would not have been a problem at all this wave so far. I think it's worth keeping an eye on when you can buy that kind of thing. I usually tend to avoid it because I think you would much rather not have it and be like, oh, I could have afforded it, than buy it and then be like, hang on, this was terrible and now I'm losing. Um... Oh, well, when it's when it's offered to me, yeah, we're going to go with it. And then I will take some more crit chance, I think. 50% crit chance, or do I just want max HP? I'll just take the crit chance here. And then we'll keep on rolling. Coupon, will this pay for itself before the end of the game? I think it will, so I will buy it here. There's another lure, so we should be getting four loot aliens this time around. So again, everyone help me uh, help me keep in mind. All right, I'm definitely going to buy this blood donation. All right, <laughs> joke's over. <laughs> so let's count loot aliens. Haven't seen one yet, although there's a crate on the ground over there. They may be dying without me seeing them. If we get fewer than four crates this game, it does mean that it's not... The percent enemy spawn isn't working the way that I think it should. Uh, this wave, rather. Come on, where's our loot aliens at all? There's one. All right, we've gotten three. Any loot guys? All right, so we only got three crates, so it's possible that the, the enemy increase is not helping with the loot alien spawn, although loot alien spawn at 25 seconds and then every 15 seconds after that, there's a, an additional chance of a, a loot alien spawn. So it may be that we just guaranteed three spawns and the fourth one didn't have time to spawn. I'm going to actually take this tractor, not because it's good, but because ending the game with positive harvesting on the loud is funny to me. And yeah, just take a little dodge. Sure, I'll take bait and luck. Keep on rolling. Max HP. Um, another obliterator. I think this obliterator is gonna help us clear these uh, bosses super, super fast. So I'll get a third boss, extra crit chance, extra tree, and we'll see if we can kill these in under like under five seconds or so. Each of these attacks should deal 1,500 and then critical hit for um, 3k at a 75% chance. So let's see, one. Target them down. All right, we're gonna end up at about 15 seconds to clear them, although it would have been faster if they had stacked, if they'd spawn stacked on top of each other and the obliterators could have both hit them or hit both of them at the same time. All right, so we ended this game with um, nine gentle aliens and two mice, which is really awesome, as well as several obliterators and some SMGs. 
Hope that you all have enjoyed this look at the loud. This was a really great game, I would say. Look at all of these super high tier items that we ended up with as well, just because we were able to pick up so much money. Um, the bags gave us 1320. Uh, the coupon saved us 480. Obviously, Sharp Bullet was worth a ton at the end there. We got 50 health from the extra stomach. Really wonderful build, um, and I think this is what the Loud should look like pretty much every time you play it. It's just such a powerful class because you get so much extra money from the extra enemies. Alright, my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this guide, and as always, you can leave a comment. Really appreciate everyone who leaves a comment. I enjoy reading them and the, seeing the great discussions that we spark there. Like the video to help with the algorithm, and subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers, folks, and I'll catch you next time.